Hello, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm making a sweet treat and that's chocolate frosting. This is a family favorite. This is my Aunt Nancy's recipe and I have to say it's the absolute best. Now this is a cooked frosting and I am starting with a stick and a half of butter. I'm using salted butter just because I like just that little bit of salt. I think that it makes the sweet just a little sweeter and gives it more flavor. And I have my pan. You can do this in a regular saucepan, but I found that the larger the saucepan is, the quicker this frosting comes together. And I'll tell you about that here in just a moment. But anyway, I've got it on medium heat and to give this chocolate frosting its rich, deep flavor, I'm using two ounces of unsweetened baker's chocolate. Make sure that it's unsweetened because we're going to add sugar to this and the chocolate is all we need. This gives it such a rich, deep flavor. We just love it. I probably should have cut that up, but I'm gonna show you how easy this is and just add it whole. While that's melting, I'm adding a cup of whole milk. Now, my grandmother used to make a chocolate frosting very similar to this, but she used Crisco and she used pet milk. I've used whole milk, I've used heavy cream, I've used pet milk, I've used it all. Just use what you have on hand. I will say that the heavy cream, oh y'all, it is very, very rich and decadent. Now I'm just gonna give this a stir and get everything nice and melted. My chocolate and butter has completely melted. I still have a few flecks of chocolate in there and my milk has started to heat up. Now, I'm going to add two cups of granulated sugar and I'm gonna stir this in. Look at it getting nice and thick. Mmm, y'all, this is so good. Now that I've added my sugar, I'm going to turn my heat on medium high. Let's say a good six or seven. And what I'm going to do is bring this up to a low boil. Can you see these bubbles? It's just now starting. And I want to make sure that I keep stirring because I don't want this to scorch. Now that this has come to a nice boil, I'm going to set my timer for three minutes and I am going to stir the entire time. This looks so good. Now I'm obviously taking it off the heat, but I want to keep stirring. One of the things that is unique about this particular frosting is that it keeps its dark, rich color. And the way that we do that is we allow it to come back up to room temperature and stir it all along. No mixer. This is an easy frosting to make but it is a labor of love. I have one more ingredient that I'm going to add, and that is two teaspoons of vanilla, but I'm not going to add the vanilla until this frosting cools down, because if I add it when it's too hot, it'll cook my flavoring out. I'm gonna go on about my business and clean up my kitchen and do a few things around the house and let this cool down. Ever so often, I'll come by and give it a nice little stir, and then we'll be ready to frost our yellow cake. Look at this beautiful frosting. It's been cooling for about 20 minutes. It doesn't take near as long to cool and thicken when you make your frosting in a larger pot. 
I've learned the smaller and deeper the pot is, the more time it takes for it to cool and thicken up. So this is moving along really nicely. Now it's cool enough to add the vanilla and I'm adding two teaspoons. Just wanna give that a stir. Something else that I add on occasion is instant coffee. I'll add a few of the granules, let's say a teaspoon or more if you like it, while I'm cooking it. And it gives this chocolate the best flavor. Hmm. Oh, that is so good. There's just not another chocolate frosting recipe that's better than this one. This is what's traditionally served on a yellow cake. Well, I'm gonna go grab my cake layers and let's get busy frosting that cake. This is enough frosting for a three layer, eight inch cake, but I like four layers and I like my cake just a little bit thicker. So I've got a six inch cake here and it's the perfect size for my husband and I. I'm gonna put this wax paper on my cake stand. Now I have a feeling that my cake is going to be lopsided. <laughs> I thought I leveled it off a little bit better than I did. Now I just want to spread this. Look at this. Now my grandmama Dossie would add chopped pecans to her chocolate cake. They would be inside between the layers and also on the outside but today I'm just keeping it simple. My little cake is done. May not be the prettiest cake I've ever made, but I assure you that it is one of the most delicious. And I'm gonna take this wax paper out. I hope you try this recipe. You will love it. You're a blessing to me. Thanks so much for watching today. Will you press that like button and share this video with your friends? And if you haven't already, subscribe to my Kathy Southern Kitchen page on YouTube and Facebook. Well, my husband's waiting right over there and he's patiently waiting to lick this pan and get a piece of this cake. I'll see you next time.